So we've got a Troy Build XP 10,500 starting watt, 7,000 running watt generator here. Customer brought it in, says it won't start. I've got everything on here. I'm going to turn the breakers off for now, but customer brought it in, said it won't start. The oil was a tiny bit low on it. It wasn't too bad though, so we went ahead and filled that up. Everything else on it looks good. I opened the gas tank here. It's just a tiny, tiny bit of gas in it. It looks pretty clear. It doesn't look real bad, but there's quite a bit of stuff floating down in there. So. It doesn't smell real good on top of that. So if I had to guess here, we're looking at a carburetor issue with this thing. We tried to start it here. Couldn't get it to start up. Carburetor looks like it's definitely seen better days. So what we're gonna do here is pull this air cleaner off. And basically to do everything here uh, in this whole video, check out the carburetor, clean the carburetor, you're only gonna need just a couple things. You're basically gonna need a screwdriver, something that'll go in the main jet. So if the width from side to side needs to be, you know, not too wide. Some screwdrivers, like the old school Craftsman's and stuff, won't work. You're going to need a couple. You can use regular sockets. I like the long ones. They just work a little better for me. The deep wells. 10 millimeter and an 8 or a 5 16 I've just got the extra gasket there for the intake. And then torch tip cleaners. We use these just to clean out all the jets. They've just got a kind of an assortment here. Different sizes. I believe it's a 12 millimeter for the bottom nut on the solenoid here, if I remember correctly. It's either 12 or 13, you'll need to take that off. We use a wire brush to just use one of the pieces here down in the pilot jet on top to clean it out to make sure we don't get surging out of the unit. So the needle nose pliers are for the fuel line and then also for if the jet, or not the jet, but the needle is stuck in the seat of the unit. A lot of times you have to kind of turn it with that to pull it out. So not a whole lot needed. We also, we use gum out carb cleaner and then we use just some compressed air here. Kind of push everything out. We'll go ahead and take the carb off here real quick and see if we can't get this thing at least to fire up on some starting food. So kind of verify that we are actually having the issue we think we're having, so. choke was on I'm gonna throw a little bit more in there so it actually gets down inside still not getting anything out of it huh As I choke it, it's gonna stay running after starting it on starting food. That's just kind of a telltale sign. Bad gas. So I used the 5 16 to take those two off the front, take the air cleaner cover off here. Now we're gonna go ahead and pull the two 10 millimeter ones off of the carburetor to get the carburetor off of there. This hose can come out either over there or over here. Well, it's gotta come out over here anyway because the hole here is where you access your other nut that holds the carburetor on. So we're gonna use our 10 millimeter there. Go ahead and zap that off. Nice and easy. And then the assembly just comes off and away from there at that point. So now you're to your carburetor. So fuel line can come off from there. What we can do is we can go ahead and looks like on this one, it's all the way spun around the back. Let's 
spin that guy around. Usually you want to spin your fuel line anyway at some point. It just helps it free up and able to actually pull up off of there as opposed to trying to get it before it's loose. So if you take it and you turn it before you try to pry it up or get it off, it'll keep you from tearing it. Because if you try to pull from here, you're going to tear it. But pry it upwards there. And there we are. I'm turn this fuel off real quick until we get our hose hooked up here and we'll just drain it into a bucket. So get the rest of the carburetor here taken off. The linkage and all that good stuff. Go ahead and hook that up real quick. Just the fuel line and turn the fuel off on. Try to get as much out of there as we can just by draining it. And then afterwards we'll go through and we'll blow it all out, make sure it's all 100% clear of all that bad fuel that's in there. So here, you can see the choke up top here, it's connected over to here. So I don't know on this one if there's going to be enough room to let us pull it off, but we're going to try here. So sometimes the gasket here at the bottom will be holding that carb on pretty tight. If you just take a pair of something and kind of wedge it in between here, it'll pull it off somewhere. So it pulled it off at the back there. Not ideal. I usually like it to come off at the other side, but since that came off, we'll go ahead and pull the spark plug wire there up. Let me get a little bit more light over here for us real quick. So it came off in between the spacer and the engine here. So we pull the spark plug wire up out of the top and go to pull this way. Doesn't look like there's going to be enough room to get this taken care of without taking it off here. So we're gonna go ahead and take the 5 16 off there also. I'm gonna use just a little right angle to do this, but you can use a wrench or whatever you'd like. There's quite a bit of room up in here though. So hopefully at that point, Quite a bit of room, not quite enough to go any further than that. So this is just taking that choke off here. Doesn't look like it's much longer. The linkage here at the back side, if you pull it all the way and then push straight up, it comes right out. So down back in so pull it all the way towards you and pull the carburetor towards you too and straight up and out same thing with the with the spring there it just comes up and out so besides the choke here we're all free i'm not sure looks like that choke might just barely make it yep without having to take it all the way out might make it a little easier Turn it up there, pull it out. So that's still just up there, but at that point, we've got the entire carburetor off. So, carbs off here. There's just two wires here that attach on the other side. And two wires right up here. Grab them. And they just unplug from those two, so. So it's just little quick connects. You can't get the wrong ones back on. They only go one way. So then your little tab right here at the bottom side, what you'll do is you'll pinch those together. So if you push a little bit, it'll come right up and out of there. So then it just goes back down through we put it back down on so got this guy here let's get it all cleaned up and back in action here we've got the ultrasonic handy it's 
see how bad this thing is, see if it needs a trip through the air or, or what's going on. Fuel's draining right now, it's kind of going slow. I don't think it had a ton in it again. You know, I forgot on the bottom side there that we are going to need a Phillips head screwdriver. So, I think the other one, the straight might work. Oh, no, nope, it sure doesn't. I like to, if they're on here real tight and you're having an issue getting them off, which almost every time you do. So, if they're on here real tight, you grab it with a big pair of pliers. Usually channel locks work great. And if you just grab it and turn, as soon as you get it broke loose, it'll come out of there easily. But usually that Phillips head is just not enough to get it out. So start it with, start it with those. That's just a pair of ice grip pliers. I love those for these. They work better than anything I've ever seen, but we're just gonna take that solenoid off the bottom so we can get to the nut that holds the bowl on there, so. And that just comes right off. There is a gasket right up under there, rubber gasket. You wanna make sure that's intact. This thing is actually not moving up and down at all. That should be springing back and forth. So now, yeah, it's not doing anything whatsoever. So I'm gonna take it here and I'm gonna turn it with my vice grip. Yeah, so we got it turning now, I got it in and out. Now it's moving in and out again. See, that could have been our whole problem is that the solenoid wasn't opening. I like to take that O-ring off of there, get it, get it away from, from the fuel before it swells up, dry it off real good. But with the solenoid right here, it wasn't moving at all. So I just took it and I lightly turned it with my vice grips. You can do it with a pair of needle nose or whatever you have handy also. But you just grab it and turn it. But you're going to want to spray carb cleaner down in there. You're gonna want that all cleared out real good. That should that should go in and out real real free there. So yeah, so that again may have been the whole issue, but let's see on the bottom here. I thought it was a 12, apparently it's a 13. Or a 14. I think some of them must be, must be different on these. I'm almost sure the one I had the other day was a 12, but anyway, let me go ahead and take this off here. Just like a regular, just like taking a bolt off. And it looks like we're kind of dirty there for sure. On this, it's kind of stuck on there usually from the bowl gasket. You just take it and kind of lightly whack it a couple times, a couple different directions, it'll come right off of there. You want to be careful to go from kind of side to side on these as to not break that gasket if we're going to clean it. So it's still kind of grasping on. You don't want to pull real hard. You want to do it kind of side to side to make sure, yep, see I broke it. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, so it looks like straight down through here. So that's your main jet there. If you're going to have issues, it's going to be in that main jet nine times out of ten. This thing looks like it's got kind of ethanol buildup all around the outside. You want that screwdriver again to be kind of all the way, all the way wide enough there. If you use one too narrow, it'll strip out that brass piece and you won't be able to get that jet out of there. You just kind of tap on it and it'll come right out there. That one's still stuck all the way up in there at this point. So it hasn't moved at all. What we're gonna do is we're gonna look down through the choke here and you can see that silver piece in the middle, that's your main emulsification tube. So we're just gonna take and we're gonna pry downwards to get that freed up and get it out of there. Oh boy. 
yep so there she popped down that one was kind of more difficult than most but it did pop down there even now i think we're going to need to spray a carb cleaner down in here just to get that thing loose otherwise again a lot of times you have to hit it on something it didn't work so if it's hard to get out again carb cleaner once or twice push it right back up in there again where it was i know it was hard to get out okay so my black adapter is falling off at this point you just want to make sure you know which way it goes keep it i usually keep them sitting somewhere the way that towards the engine or away from me is down that's just my kind of way of doing it but it's up to you which way you want to do it just so you know which way it goes so that push back in there now i'm going to come up at the top hit it with a little carb cleaner go ahead and push it back down through oh yeah now it's kind of free so well, it seemed free sometimes it's more difficult than others yeah it is still kind of right up there on that edge i can still see it down through there just a little bit Hmm. work it back through again back up through there back down through there she comes and again you don't want to really hit this on anything too hard otherwise it'll mushroom the end here i've got a couple rags down here that was probably perfectly fine doesn't look like there's a whole lot in here but all these holes all the way through they go all the way through each one of them so that's your emulsification tube I'm trying to get it to focus here i'm not sure why it isn't your emulsification tube here all these holes each individual one goes all the way through so you can use your torch tip cleaner you want to clean those all the way through so you want to work them down through if they're completely plugged or anything like that you want to work them real hard but otherwise just down through you can use something smaller than what it is but or you can use kind of something the same size either way but just work those through make sure they're all 100 percent clean down through here you want this to be 100 percent clean all down through the middle all down on the inside all up through here that's where your fuel shut off shuts off the fuel it's straight up through there so if that's all clogged up that fuel shut off is just going to get clogged up again and it's not going to work so make sure the bowl's nice and clean this one honestly with as as bad as it is i'm not going to clean it these carburetors aren't horrible i'll kind of show you a nice trick about that but as far as cost wise goes it could potentially be clean but with the way that that needle is right there i would say it's got a very high chance of this needle and seat failing again even when replacing the needle you're gonna be running against issues with the ethanol here against the brass so basically at this point you're gonna spend an hour hour and a half cleaning this thing not knowing if it's gonna run the best and we're gonna have to put say you know a new bowl gasket here on it a new needle and seat and then it's not guaranteed to run right at that point. It's not guaranteed to run great. So uh, unfortunately in this, you know, world we live in, at this point with something this dirty and it's gonna take this much time, it's gonna be something we're gonna throw a new carb on. So I'm gonna show you how to clean it still. I've kind of went through the, the main things there. You wanna, you wanna take care of the emulsification tube clean all the way through. You know, you wanna look through it with with light in here and if there's not light straight through if you can't see a perfect circle down through there down through each one then there's something in it there's something wrong with it so if you're going to clean it clean down through here both with those you can do it with carb cleaner you can do it with something like this just pull a loom out i usually do just like this just grab a grab a loom here and just pull it on out of there So now we've got a nice easy carb cleaning wire brush you can just throw it down through there and you want to work that until everything in there is off of there 
I mean, you want all this off as much as you can also. We usually throw them in the carb cleaner and it works very well. Use some simple green, some things like that, but make sure that seat's clear. Make, make sure this needle all the way up and down. You don't want anything on these corners here. If you look here, you can see how the corners are just the worst part of it. So anything there is gonna keep that needle and, and seat stuck. So fuel's not even gonna get into the carburetor if that's stuck. So this thing's pitted all real bad too on top of it. It's in bad shape, but you'll wanna make sure all of this is clean. You know, if there's any flaky, scaly stuff, get that off of there. But the most important parts are this main jet here. You want that 100% clean and everything around it clean. And then your fuel shut off. That's gotta be springing back okay. Your main bottom piece and your emulsification tube. So those are all gonna keep you running good. The rest of it, you know, it is really kind of irrelevant except for your pilot jet. Now it'll still run if you clean all those things and get the fuel going to it good. But if your pilot jet is clogged, it'll still surge. So if you pull that off, pull your top off here. Well, yeah, see that one's just stuck in there so bad. This carburetor's in bad shape, but down through here, there's a jet. It's hard to see there. So straight down through there is a jet, straight down through the middle of here. So if you take your, your wire brush pieces here and you just run one of those down through there, you should be able to see it on the other side and you'll want it clean all the way through. You can see that down through there. So you can see it on the other side there. That's what you want. And you want that completely cleaned out and you'll throw that back in there. You wanna make sure the O-rings on the outside are in good shape. Normally they are, normally you don't have an issue there, but throw those back in there. Make sure this is all cleaned up before you put it back together. But from there, you'll essentially just put your needle back in here. If you took it off or if you replaced it, there is a spring on it. And all that spring does is keep tension on it. So it goes up through the little hole here and back. So up through the hole and back. So it's real easy to get back in there with that spring on it, up through, back, and then that gets reinstalled. So go straight down through there, put your needle back in there. I'm not really sure where mine is. Make sure your bowl gasket is down in there real well. You know, this one's busted, but your drain always goes 180 to where your inlet is. So drain on that side. That's where this guy was, just like that. Of course your emulsification tube main jet will go in there the emulsification tube always goes with the long end facing down if you got the carburetor upside down so the long end in first and then the screwdriver end obviously goes in there you want to tighten it down don't over torque it or anything like that in case you ever have to take it apart again you want to make sure again this is real nice and clean all the way through the o-ring on this needs to be in good shape this one is otherwise it'll leak so we put that back on there. I didn't screw everything back in at this point, but. And then your solenoid, very last part here. You want it away from the inlet also when you install it, it's still kind of puking out there. When you get a carb on these, they come with all that. So that's what we're gonna do. But yeah, then your, your screws back in, there, there. And then also you can put your top one here. There is that spacer that goes on. And then you put your top one back in. You want that to screw in about halfway there. And then you'd make sure all your gaskets were good. So we had the, we had this off. That doesn't look horrible, but it looks like we could probably go ahead and replace that intake gasket there. So we're gonna do that at the same time as we replace the other one. And all you do is put a new one on there. I mean, throw it up, throw it up on. You can clean that, clean that other one all the way off. You don't want any of it left over, but we're gonna throw a new carb on it. This is basically just a 13 to 14 horsepower engine, even though the unit claims on it 
21, but it's a 2100 series, which is 21 foot-pounds of gross torque. So, kind of, kind of a little bit deceiving in my eyes, but I'm not the one who rated it. So yeah, basically at 13, 14 horsepower, carburetor will work perfect. That's what kind of engine it is. So, I've got another one here. The only difference in this, this is the one we stock. The only difference in this one versus the other one is that the choke needs to be reused here. Because the other one that comes with it is not right. And then the inlet for your fuel this one comes up straight and this one doesn't. So other than that, everything is the same. They're meant for the same engine. It's got the same solenoid on the bottom. It is a different size fuel line. So what we like to do is we like to put a different line on here first, just kind of as a, uh, as a spacer up to it. And then we throw the quarter inch line on there. It doesn't really matter that this one comes up straight and that one comes out curved. So those are the only two differences in the thing. Other than that, exactly the same units, meant for exactly the same thing. So we're going to take this out here. Unscrew this. Just a flat screwdriver looks like there on top. And we need this choke lever because it's got, it's got a hole here. Whereas the one that came with the other one didn't. It didn't have that hole. So, I'm going to go ahead and screw this right back down. Make sure that's lined up there. And it's going to go straight down in there. It might feel a little bit tight going down in there, but... It's normal because it's locking into place. So now we've got this one and that one exactly the same at this point. Everything's perfect. So really just the gaskets and put it back together. You want to make sure all that fuel is out of that tank though. If you don't, you will have issues. We'll get all set up up top here. I'll get a couple gaskets together and we'll get this thing all put back together. So I got the back gasket here replaced for the intake. On the old gasket that's on there, you just, I use a razor blade and you just want to scrape along and get everything off. You want to be careful not to damage it. Of course it is aluminum, so it's easy to damage if you're using something steel, but light wire brush, like a brass or something like that. But again, you want to be careful not to ruin any of the aluminum when you, when you scrape that off. But you do want all the gasket material off back there. I've got a new one on there. Gas looks all the way drained. Normally I like to take it off here. And I'll show you why. There's usually quite a bit more back up in there. That piece there. Sixteens to loosen this up. So that's why I like to remove that. Because there is all kinds of fuel still up in there. Even when it looks empty, it's not. It's because that plastic piece sits up in there in such a way that it sits above the fuel line, even though there is a place for it to drop down here. Let that drain out real quick. Hopefully get some of that stuff out of there.
doesn't look like all of it's out of there, but most of it is. Yeah, so from there, what we like to do is we'll actually use a compressed air and blow both ways through the tank. Apparently there's a lot more in there than what I was thinking there was, but that's okay. We'll get it all out here. Again, you want this tank to be dry if you have any questions about the quality of the fuel. Well, there's our O-ring that's supposed to go right up onto here. Just keeps it sealed against the tank. It doesn't look in great shape, but it's not in horrible shape either. I think I did it backwards there. I think it's supposed to go with the lip towards the nut. So get it back on there and you can kind of screw it in or push it on however you want, but be careful not to rip it either way you do it. So that should go back up on there smooth, hopefully. Looks like it's kind of stopped any leak in here, but we're going to blow up through there again quite a few times. It's a lot of fuel. Again, tank needs to be completely dry. You shouldn't see anything dripping out of it at all if that tank's dry. It's nice and dry down in there, you know, that way you can get all those bunnies out of the way. We saw all that white stuff floating, well, and again, I may still need a little bit more here. We saw a drop come out a second ago. So we're all good there. We can put that back together. All right, so, again, let's go ahead and tighten him up in there. He just goes up in, you'll get him quite a few turns about where it was before. And then you hold it and you're gonna tighten the nut against it while you're holding it. So, it doesn't need to be super tight, just enough for that to seal back to it. Take a rag here off. If you lose control here of either one you can see which way they go as far as your linkages go we're going to put the new carb on as soon as we so we've got a piece of fuel line here it's five sixteenths inside diameter and a quarter inch outside so basically all we do here is we'll go straight on him and we'll go straight on there like such 
just like that. And then we'll take that same razor blade and just cut it off right at the level where we are. So you can use razor blade or snips or whatever you want. But it's gonna be right there at that, right there at that inlet. So now we've got a quarter inch inlet there. I believe based on how the rest of it looked up there at the time that we should be able to get this thing all back together without replacing the fuel line on this. Oop, I forgot my I want my black adapter here. I want this to go back on there. Just like such. You want to make sure that there's no gasket material left on this side of the black adapter either because that'll also cause you air leak up front and it won't run good. So you want your new gasket there. Like such. Hole looks like it goes to the top right on that one. And then this new guy here. So we've got to do this choke actually before. So we're going to throw him in there. Straight down in the hole here. Over. And then we'll bend it up. So now it's on there. We're going to go ahead and put the front in here. Be careful with it, you don't want to break anything, but it does take quite a bit of a quite a bit of a little bit of a bend sometimes. I always like to do the spring here first, even though it kind of works against you, but then you pull it towards you and put your linkage down in there. So you pull it back out as far as you need to and then push till your linkage is back down in there. Now we'll push you the rest of the way in. And then as far as your choke goes, you want to make sure on the generator over here your choke is closed. And then you'll go ahead and tighten that down. Or I'm sorry, your choke's open. Over there. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and tighten this down with the choke open up top here. That's just that 5 16th you had at the top there before. Tighten them down where the chokes, chokes in the open position. And then you can test it by either closing it here. Yeah, see that looks like it should go on that other side. I'm gonna put it on the other side. I think someone's been in here messing with it. Just doesn't look straight enough on that side to be a good, a good choke grab. Do this a little bit. Let's come right on this side of her. Put that right there. I'm going to make sure that choke is, is in the right position we want as soon as I get this started. I'm about ready to tighten. So, we we'll probably want it. So, open. That's the open position right there. So I just pushed it back on the other side, but it's open. So I'm going to tighten it down right here where I both, both are open here. And then I'll go ahead and pull that choke on the other side and make sure that it actually chokes over here like it should before we button everything. Yep, it sure does. Choke off choke, okay. Yep, and the choke is fully open over here. It's kind of sticky a little bit, it seems. It's kind of weird. It did fully open, so. All right, well, we're gonna go ahead and put this fuel line back on now. Throw it on up top there. And then as far as down here goes, you just slide it over that piece we just made, just like it was a regular quarter inch nipple. 
Sometimes it's a little bit more difficult since it's rubber on rubber, but it just slides over. And then so does your keeper just like normal. So we got that back on there. Got to hook back up our lines up here. One goes to this guy. And then one goes to the other one. And then where he is, yeah, right here. Get those hooked up. And then put this air cleaner box back on here. And that's all there is to it. So again, if you can clean the carburetor, go ahead and clean it. You know, many times they're able to be cleaned and perfectly fine, but if it's that bad, there's no reason to spend all that time doing something that probably isn't going to work afterwards like you want it to anyway. So this thing's been sitting for a long time, I'm sure. A very long time. And uh, they just wear out, you know. Worn out units. Sometimes the stuff just needs to be replaced. So and there's that little black piece on that old carburetor. It's right here. So you just put it over the top of that wire and then put it back down through that hole over there. It just keeps it out of the way a little bit, so. From there. Make sure your gasket here on the intake side is still good. This one's not in perfect shape, but the corner there right by the stud, it's not going to pull anything from that side, so I'm not worried about it because the rest of the gasket's still perfectly intact. Throw that back up on there, throw our two 10 millimeter screws back in there. I took the spark plug wire off at some point here. I think that was when the, uh, when the black You don't want to over tighten these if you're doing it by hand. Yeah, I think it was when we were doing the black adapter. Plop the spark plug back on there. Air cleaner cover just goes straight back right on. Put those two 5 16 bolts back in there. They should have stayed with the unit to begin with, so. So it looks like here, as far as everything goes, I think we have everything hooked up, all ready to go here. Wiring's all good together. Got the fuel to the on position. All right. Let me go grab some fuel here real quick and we'll fire this thing up. We use ethanol free treated fuel. We treat it with phaser 3000. It does a good job to prevent phase separation from happening in ethanol fuels. Not that this has ethanol in it, but moisture it also combats, which moisture will gather in any fuel out there during temperature changes. And a lot of people don't, don't pay attention to that. I didn't get my tube back in here real easy to do from the, from the top. You just push it down in and then you push it back in the other side. Again, it's not, it just pushes straight in. There's nothing really holding it there. So just straight in here and straight down on the other side. We'll go ahead and choke the unit here. Got the fuel in the on position. Everything else is on on that side. Got fuel here.
So there you have it. Again, make sure the fuel is all the way drained. If you have any question at all about the quality of that fuel, make sure that that carburetor is completely cleaned all, all through all the orifices, spray it off real good. Nothing's really gonna hurt it there. The O-rings swell up sometimes. If they come out, dry them off. Other than that, really easy to either clean the carburetor or replace the carburetor and get these units back up and going. You know, they kind of throw you with a curveball for that different carburetor because it comes up at a 90 and the choke's a little bit different. It's exactly the same unit, exactly the same everything. Engine-wise, you know, you can change horsepower a little bit with an exhaust, but this thing is just touting gross foot-pounds of torque. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.